lot of things I've complained about over the past couple of years. One of them is this notion that we have far too many experts out there when it comes to terrorism, i.e. people who are self-styled experts as opposed to real ones. And when you look at a lot of these individuals, you dig a little bit and you find that in fact, there's not a lot of there there. I find that the vast majority of people who ask to be called experts are anything but the sort. This is one of the reasons why, and I think I've mentioned this before, I prefer not to be called a terrorism expert because the term has become essentially meaningless. If you refer to me, you can certainly call me a specialist because that's what I've spent most of my well, the last 20 years or so doing. And you know, I've written five books on the topic and I think I know a fair bit about it, but please don't call me an expert. I don't want to be lopped in with a bunch of the fakes and pseudo people that are out there. Another part of this pseudo expertise that's always gotten my goat is this notion of self radicalization. It's the idea that anyone with the right motivation can somehow get from zero to 60 or maybe in a metric country zero to 100 by just reading things online or watching videos and somehow that person can go from ordinary citizen to Allahu Akbar ranging terrorist. I've been saying for the past 25 years that that is not the case. Certainly in my time at CSIS, the Canadian Security Intelligence Service, we found no cases of actual self-radicalization. And if there are any in the world, any true cases of self-radicalization, they are very, very few and far between. So why am I raising this today in this podcast? I came across a really interesting article in a newspaper called The Nation Africa. Now, obviously, it's an African newspaper. And it was an article that came out just a couple of days ago about uh, an uh, Islamic cleric in Kenya who ended up being a major influence, not just in Kenya, but right up and down the eastern coast of Africa. His name was Abud Rogo. He was a sheikh. He was killed in 2015 by a bunch of guys driving by that basically put a bunch of bullets into him. Not sure if his, his murder was ever solved. But what's interesting is that Mr. Rogo, or Sheikh Rogo, was seen to be directly responsible for the radicalization, recruitment, and essentially creation of terrorists ranging from Somalia into Tanzania and even into Mozambique. Mozambique has been in the news a lot lately because there's an Islamic State affiliate called the Islamic State Central African Province, as well as a group called Al-Shabaab, not to be confused with the Al-Shabaab in Somalia, that's been very, very active up and down the eastern coast of Africa. The point I'm trying to make here is that these individuals who ended up joining terrorist groups like Al-Shabaab in Somalia, like Al-Shabaab in Mozambique, like Islamic State Central African Province, didn't get there by themselves. They got there because they were radicalized by someone else. And in many cases, that someone else happens to be a religious cleric, like Sheikh Rogo. Another interesting case I found recently, an article in the Washington Post that came out a couple of days ago about a terrorist attack that took place in June of this year. A man who ambushed a New York City police officer, stabbing him in the neck, stealing his gun to shoot other officers. He had demonstrated a violent, an interest in violent Islamist extremism. He punctuated his attacks with Allahu Akbar, God is great, which is what these wankers do. And when the police and uh, the FBI did some searching into him, they found out he was a real fan of Anwar al-Awlaki, also called Awlaki. Now he, you probably are aware, was an American Yemeni citizen who was in actually in Virginia, I believe, during 9-11, was on the radar of the FBI and uh, of us at CSIS for a long time. I used to say that we didn't find a single person who was radicalizing the violence in Canada who didn't listen to Awlaki's lectures. Anyhow, Olaki was droned back in 20, I forget what, it was a couple years ago, 20, 2015, 2016. American drone got him in Yemen. The point I'm trying to make here is that people like Olaki and people like Sheikh Rogo are absolutely critical parts of the radicalization to violence process. The people that we're talking about, people that go and join terrorist groups like Islamic State and Al Qaeda, the people that carry out attacks here in Western countries like Canada, United States, and Western Europe, they don't get there by themselves. Most of them don't have two neurons to rub together. They couldn't organize a piss up in a bar. They get there because they are in contact with other individuals who can provide them with the rationale, the motivation, 
the justification and essentially push these people over the edge where they move from talk to action because the vast majority of people who think about doing things don't do a damn thing. As I've always said, there are many that talk the talk and few that walk the walk. That was certainly my experience working in Canadian intelligence for, for 32 years. These recruiters and or radicalizers are happy to play this role without actually doing anything themselves. They're not the ones to strap on a bomb. They're not the ones to, you know, take a knife into a Canadian tire. They're not the ones to get a gun and start shooting randomly at a crowd in a shopping mall. They sit back, they identify individuals whom they think they can influence. Maybe they sense a vulnerability. Maybe they sense somebody who really wants to make a difference and they plant the seed in their in their heads. They give them the ideas. They provide them with the religious texts and the historical examples that lead these other individuals on to taking action. As I said, you don't get there on your own. And it both worries and bothers me that we still hear high-level Canadian officials and American officials and officials in other countries say a self-radicalized lone wolf did X, Y, or Z. Self-radicalization doesn't occur. Lone wolves don't occur. That's not the way that terrorism operates. There are such things as people that act on their own. I prefer the term lone actor for a whole host of reasons, one of which is that lone wolves evoke some kind of romantic image of an animal that is on its own and, and, and doing things that are somehow heroic. I don't think terrorists are heroic to you. Nevertheless, despite my complaining and my carping and my pointing out of this error for two decades now, we see that we hear the same things time and time again. Is it laziness? Possibly. I think it's just ignorance. I think a lot of the people that make these statements are A, not experts. Let's face it, most of them are political officials that don't know anything about terrorism. They, they simply say what they're fed by their policymakers and their advisors and the intelligence and law enforcement agencies that provide them with the information. And alas, there are real, well, hang on, not real, uh, supposed real experts who use the term self-radicalization. I've heard it here in Canada. I've heard it in the States. It is an unfortunate term that is frankly erroneous, and I wish people would stop using it. So the next time you hear someone talk about self-radicalization, your antenna should go up. And you should ask yourself, hmm, that Gursky guy said that self-radicalization is a misnomer. It's false. If he's right, maybe these people who are extolling themselves as experts aren't quite as expert as they think they are. Then you start doing some digging and you see, hmm, maybe there is less there there than I thought at first. Maybe these people aren't real experts. I'm going to call for this one last time. I always say one last time. I'm sure I'm going to repeat, repeat myself three years from now. But here it is. Can we please assign the term self-radicalization to the ash heap of history, stop using it, and start analyzing and talking about terrorism more accurately so that we can get a better understanding of it. Anyhow, that's my thoughts. I'm curious what you think. Have you come across the term self-radicalization? Have you used the term self-radicalization? If so, justify to me why you're doing it. You can reach me in several ways on email, borealisrisk at gmail.com or on Twitter at Borealis Saves. You'll also find me on LinkedIn and on Facebook. You can also go to my website and subscribe to all the content Go to BorealisThreatenRisk.com, hit the subscribe button. You'll get a free daily email of all the podcasts and blogs and the other material that I produce free of charge on a daily basis. I'd love to hear from you. I'll talk to you again soon. Until then, stay safe.